Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the file sharing service that's built into macOS Server. Now file sharing is one of the uh, simplest reasons that most people would want to run a server is to be able to share their files across various machines uh, either on a local network or remotely and so oh, uh, macOS Server does have file sharing built into it. And so what I want to do is cover all the different pieces of file sharing uh, to help you understand how to set that up. And then we'll take a look at ways in which you can access these file shares once we get them up and running. And I'll do that in another screencast. Now, uh, one of the things I want to talk about is I get a lot of questions about whether or not you can share files through, o uh, through Mac o OS server uh, with a NAS, with a network attached storage, where, you've attaching, where you're attaching a drive through Ethernet to your router, let's say. Uh, one of the things you need to understand about that is that network attached storage systems usually have their own servers built into them. So they have their own ways of controlling their files and having you access them and all of that. So macOS server does not control those particular uh, storage units. So when you're setting up your server, what you want to do is make sure that you're attaching your storage to the server itself and then you're using the server then to decide how to share those different files and folders that you've got. So you really need to choose one or the other. Uh, Mac OS server will not manage uh, NAS devices. So just wanted to put that out there just in case you run into that situation. Now another thing to let you know is that you don't have to have Mac OS server to do file sharing itself. As a matter of fact, if I just pull up uh, system preferences here, and if you go into file sharing, uh, let me just come back over here. So if you go into sharing right here, uh, you'll see that you have the option of uh, setting up file sharing right here. And once you check that, you can set up your different permissions and who, what folders you're going to share and what users have access to that and you're set and ready to go. And you can even in here set up your uh, file shares over SMB or AFP, which are just two different protocols. Uh, SMB is Windows file sharing, uh, though Apple is moving everything more over to SMB uh, because then it'll be universal between Windows and Mac. Uh, and then you have AFP, which is Apple's file sharing protocol, which is the uh, traditional standard. Uh, I am finding still a little bit where AFP might be faster in some cases uh, for Macs if you have just an uh, all Mac environment. Uh, the SMB uh, implementation still has its troubles here and there with Macs, uh, but uh, you could still use it, but just want to kind of let you know that. But this is how you could come in and set all this up. And so you could do all of this right on your Mac itself without having Mac OS server. Let me just put that down. I just wanted to show you that you could do that. So this is the file sharing service. I've got it already turned on. And you can see that uh, the server, which is my local machine name, it's available on the local network in my Finder sidebar so that I can do file sharing right from there. Uh, you notice I've got settings. I've got connected users. Uh, this is where I'll see all users who are connected to whatever shares I got and how long they've been connected and over what uh, connection. And so this is a great way to monitor who's accessing your file shares and just keep track of that so that you know uh, what's going on with your file shares. Let's go back to settings. Again, as with all of our services, I can edit uh, permissions in here. I can allow connections from all users or only some users. And I can uh, use when connecting from all networks, private networks, or only some networks. In this case, I'm just going to leave it at the default. But you can set your permissions overall, your global permissions, right here for the file sharing service. Now, right here, we've got this personal folders, and it's going to create personal folders when users connect on iOS. And what this does is it actually connect, uh, creates a personal folder, and the name of it is personal folder, that it puts on your server for your iOS devices that connect. And it's just a way to be able to share those files back and forth from your iOS devices and your Mac itself. So something you create on there would be accessible over on your server. And I'm going to show you how to connect via iOS to get that all set up in the next screen in one of my uh, one of my future screencasts here. But if you look here, I can edit the personal folder access, and I can say how I access that. So that, uh, you know, it says personal folders created when users are connecting file sharing on iOS. And it can be shared over SMB, AFP, WebDAV. You can set it up on whatever protocol you want. And it, you can say that you only allow encrypted connections to add a level of security to this so that you're not having to worry about that. So I'm just going to say cancel here in this case because I don't need to uh, worry about that. And then down here now is where I select my shared folders. And you notice I got, a, I got a plus here to add a folder, a minus to delete a folder, and then edit. So let's go ahead and select a folder. If I just hit the plus here, I get a drop down that lets me select uh, a folder that I want to share. And you can see here I've got this 
uh, server folder that's already set up. I can share that folder if I want, or I can create a new folder uh, within that. Uh, it's up to me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose the server folder. I'm going to say choose. And there it is. It puts this server folder in here ready to be shared. Now what I need to do is I need to set how I want it to be shared, however. So let me just double click on it here. And this is what the, uh, the, sh the actual file share looks like for my settings. And you can see here I've got uh, server. You can see where that server folder is located. Uh, you got the name of the actual file here. I can hit browse to browse to the location of where that is. Notice how it takes me up to the server storage tab to show me where that particular file is located so that I can uh, get access to it here. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back to file sharing. And let's go back into edit. I'm just going to hit the pencil. Now down here are the different ways in which I can access this particular folder, and I can select those. I can choose to access it via iOS if I want to have it accessible that way. Uh, SMB, like I said, Windows uh, Sharing Protocol, AFP, Apple's File Sharing Protocol. And then we got WebDAV, which is, uh, you know, over the uh, HTTPS uh, file share. And so that comes over an encrypted connection that way. And so this would be uh, another way for me to really access it over... Uh, an iOS device. If you're using something like, uh, let's say, Transmit or something on your iOS devices, they have a WebDAV connection. You would then check that so that you could access that that way. Uh, the iOS checkbox here is to access it really in iOS uh, type of um, uh, applications that Apple's put together, like pages and numbers and that sort of thing. I can choose whether I want guest users to access it. I can say only allow encrypted connections, so you can't uh, access it in any other connection but an encrypted one. And then I can set this up for home directories over a particular protocol. And uh, the home directories are where I can put my home folders on the server so that my users then can log in with those home, home folders and have access to them from the server itself. So I can log into any computer on my network. And then down here I've got all of the different permissions set up. And you can see here's uh, myself there as an owner of this folder. And if I just hit the drop down here, I can choose to read and write, which allows me to see what's inside the folder. That's read and write to it. So I can add folders, delete folders, that sort of thing in files. Here we've got staff, which is, uh, or here we got read only, which means I can only see what's in the folder. Write only means I can only write to it, but I can't see what's in the folder. And then no access means I won't be able to access anything in the folder. Won't even see it there when I try to mount my shares. And so that's what the no access is. And you can see here I've got staff group that's read-only, everyone else is read-only, and so this is how all the permissions are set. So in my case with this folder, I'm just going to leave those two connections. And uh, yeah, actually, let's just go ahead and do an IO. Let's just go ahead and do WebDAV in our case here. And I'm going to say only allow uh, encrypted connections. Now notice when I check that, I want to show you this, is that if I say only allow encrypted connections, that means I can only connect via SMB because the AFP protocol doesn't allow that kind of encryption to take place. If I uncheck it, see AFP is available. So again, it all depends. If you want that security, you're going to have to connect to it by SMB. So let's just go ahead and leave it like this. That should be fine. And I'm going to say OK. And once you do that, then it's going to set the permissions for you on the server for that particular folder. OK, now let me just show you this too. Once I'm in here with this folder, I can delete it right here or again, click the pencil to edit. Now, let me just show you one more thing. I'm going to add another file share here for home folders. And so what we're going to do is select this. We're going to create a new folder within the server folder just for now. And we're going to call it home folders. And I'm going to say create. So we've got this new folder in there. I'm going to say choose. So now we have this home folders folder set up. So let's go ahead and edit that for a minute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say allow home directories over. And you can do SMB or AFP. It's up to you which one you want to do. Let's just do AFP just right now for simplicity's sake. I'm going to say OK. And so now I've set that up for home folders. Now that I've got that set, let's go over to our user accounts and see how to add a user whose home folders are set up on the server. OK, so here we are over in the users area. And you remember we created John Doe. And John Doe was a local network uh, user. And so let's go ahead and edit him. I'm just going to double click. And so here we are with John Doe. And remember, we had set him up with services only. So let's go ahead and just hit this drop down. Now you notice that I've got this option for home folders here. And I've actually got the home folders file that I just set up available. And if I just click on that, you notice that now it's going to create home folders for John Doe that sit on the server. This is going to allow him to 
go into my Mac that I bound to the server in our previous screencast, uh, put in his username and password, and then his home folders will mount from the server on that other Mac that he's logging in from. Again, this happens on your local network. It does not happen remotely. So if you're looking for people to connect remotely to your server, you don't want to do this because then their home folders are sitting on the server and they can only access them when they're local unless we set up something called mobile accounts, which I'll talk about later, which is basically a syncing mechanism back and forth. Um, but that gets a little bit more complex. So again, if you want them to access their home folders remo remotely, you don't want to do this. Uh, so anyway, so I've got that set there. Now I can limit his disk usage to a certain size in megabytes or gigabytes and say he can only use this much. I don't want him using any more than that. Uh, you can just set a limit there and then that way it uh, won't, uh, you know, won't just keep eating up space, especially if he's just going to keep downloading files and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just undo that because I don't care in this case. So I'm going to say OK. And so what that's going to do is create home folders now for John Doe on, uh, on my actual server. So if I just come back in here, and if I just double click on the home folder here, and if I just browse to the location, I want you to notice that now John Doe has home folders. And they've created his own desktop, documents, downloads, the whole thing, so that he can now log in and have pull his home folders right here from the server itself. So again, this is a great solution if you're, let's say, at home and you've got a bunch of kids that you want to log into any machine so nobody's fighting over a particular machine. You could set it up this way and it will pull their home folders from the server and they can use any computer and not have to complain about only needing the one that they want. So that gives you an idea, let's go back here, on how file sharing works. Again, you can set this up with various permissions uh, for different file shares. Uh, you can secure it so that it's a very secure way to access those file shares. And, uh, and again, it it's just gives you a little bit more control right here in the server interface of what happens. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.